One of the fundamental ideas in statistics is that of error. That might seem strange since we're usually talking about data as trying to be precise, but the reality is, in almost all cases, whatever statistical or database conclusion we come to has some error built into it. If someone tells you that the average age of all Americans is 38.1 years, or that the average temperature in Miami in April is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or that there are about 40 bear attacks each year, what they're really saying is that those are estimates with some error around them. Average age might be somewhere between 37 and 39 years, average temperature might be somewhere between 77 and 83 degrees, and there might be somewhere between 30 and 50 bear attacks each year. People might not explicitly state those ranges, but behind all their estimates, those ranges are there, and they are typically called confidence intervals. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, we're going to talk about confidence intervals. I'll provide an intuitive explanation for what they are, explain what influences their range, and show you a quick demonstration using this bag of dice to really drive home their intuition. And if you can't tell yet, I'm all about intuition. No formulas today, just the ideas. After all, if you get the idea behind something complex, the rest is a whole lot easier to learn. Anyway, let's get started with a simple intuitive definition. A confidence interval is just the uncertainty that comes with any kind of estimate derived from a sample. And that last word, sample, is really key. When I want to know something like the average age of the US population, I suppose I can go and ask every single person what their age was, but that would be an incredibly difficult task. Instead, what I might do is pull together a random sample of a few thousand Americans, ask them their age, and then use that estimate as a guess about the entire US population. For example, if I asked 1,000 Americans their age, and the average for that sample was 38 years, I might then conclude that the average age of all Americans is also 38 years. But that would be a bit too precise an estimate. We can all appreciate that asking just 1,000 people likely isn't a perfect window into the age of all Americans. After all, if I asked another group of 1,000 Americans what their age was, I might find that the average age for them is 37 years. Not too different from my first group, but different enough to draw a totally new conclusion about the age of all Americans. So instead of saying with unreasonable certainty that the average age of all Americans is exactly 38 years, I might instead say that I'm pretty sure that the average age of all Americans is somewhere between 35 and 41 years. That's not a super precise estimate, but it is much more likely that the actual average age of all Americans falls somewhere in that range than it being exactly 38 years. But how do you come up with that range? Why 35 to 41 and not 30 to 46 or 37 to 39? Before we answer that question, if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's see what goes into determining the size of confidence intervals. There are two things that determine the range of a confidence interval. How varied the population is and how big your sample is. Let's take those one at a time. If everyone in the US was either 40 or 41 years old, well, any sample I take would result in only people who are either 40 or 41 years old, and my best guess on the average age of all Americans would be something like between 40 and 41 years of age. It would be a really tight estimate. On the other hand, in reality, as we all know, the range of actual ages in the US population is much wider, between zero and over 100 years. So when I look at a random sample of people, that random sample will have much more variation. And the more variation in the sample, the wider is my confidence in it. The other input to the size of a confidence interval is the sample size. And to help make the intuition of why sample size matters, let me do a simple demonstration with some dice. These are dice that I use for playing tabletop role-playing games. And unlike most dice you might be used to, they come in six different shapes. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 20 sides. In this bag, I have a whole bunch of dice all jumbled up, and I might ask what the average number of sides is for all the dice in this bag. Well, I could pull them all out and just count, but I've got YouTube videos to make and don't have that kind of time. So instead, I'm just going to pull out a few dice and compute an average for them. Then I'll just assume that the average for the entire bag is the same as the average for my sample. Easy enough. Let's start with a really lazy but pretty fast approach and only take out four dice. Okay. Here I have a six-sided dice, a six-sided dice, a 12-sided dice, and an eight-sided dice. And the average of that is right here on the screen. So is that the same as the average for the entire bag? Maybe. But let's try that again before we get too excited. Now I have a 20-sided die, a 20-sided die, a 12-sided die, and a 10-sided die. And the average of that is right here on the screen. 
But those are really different estimates. They can't both be the average for the entire bag. In other words, because my sample is so tiny, my confidence in how well these estimates reflect the actual average of all the dice in this bag is really, really wide, maybe something like 5 to 15, which is kind of a useless guess. So let's do better. This time, I'll pick 10 dice. Okay, now I've got these dice and I'll display them right here. Like before, let's do the exact same thing again to see what happens. Well, this time I have the dice displayed right here. And the averages of both are displayed below. Notice that the averages are a lot closer together than when I picked just four dice. Going from four dice to 10 dice made the range of the two different draws of dice a whole lot tighter. And in doing so, it also made my confidence interval, my estimate of the average number of sides on all the dice in this bag, smaller. Maybe something like an average of eight to 10. The more dice I pull from the bag, the more precise my estimate becomes. If I pick 20 dice as my sample, my confidence interval would get smaller still. And this is a trade-off. I can get a more precise estimate of the actual average number of dice of all the dice in this bag, but it'll take me a lot longer to count each of the 20 dice than it would to count, say, four dice. So figuring out the sample size is in part an exercise in making this trade-off. How much effort do you want to exert versus how much precision do you need? And I can't make that trade-off for you. Rather, you need to decide what makes the most sense for whatever it is that you're doing. The same exact thing is true for any estimate we make from a sample and try to apply it to a population. The bigger the sample, the tighter our estimate, and subsequently, the tighter the confidence interval. That's really all there is to it. A confidence interval tells you how sure you are that the thing you're measuring in a sample really reflects the entire population. The wider the confidence interval, the less precise is your estimate, and the narrower the confidence interval, the more precise. Now, there's definitely more to confidence intervals like determining how much confidence you want to begin with. You probably heard of things like 95% confidence intervals or something similar, and I do have another video explaining what that means, which I'll make sure to link to below. But the key here is that you hopefully now understand the intuition behind what a confidence interval is, where it comes from, and what it tells you. Finally, as always, Thanks so much for watching.